This is our, uh, our attempt at doing a little Maker Faire, uh, something that um, has to do with Wi-Fi, has to do with making little fun little things, and also give you something to take home that you can play with. So that, that was the goal when we were thinking about this. Uh, worked with a guy by, by the name of uh, Jerry Ola, or how do you pronounce it? Oya? Oja? Uh, he works for Ekahau now. And what we wanted was uh, some sort of tool you could use in your wireless LAN career. One of the things we came up with was one of these little uh, Odroid. Happens to be a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi. The difference being it has a one gig Ethernet port. Because of that one gig Ethernet port, we can do some things that you can't quite do with Raspberry Pi solutions. Uh, a company called NetBees uses Raspberry Pis and does a lot of uh, testing that they can use the tool for. But one thing it can't do is it can't be the end point of iPerf. Because when you have an AP on one end and a 100 meg Ethernet on the other, the bottleneck isn't your Wi-Fi. The bottleneck is your little Raspberry Pi. Now, the Raspberry Pi as a client can do all sorts of things and push client information. It can listen and do good things. But we wanted something you could use for throughput testing, uh, specifically for NetScout Survey Pro. It has iPerf throughput testing. Echo has throughput testing. Zap has throughput testing. Uh, and Rob had mentioned this morning's thing. You know, not everyone has a... And I set you up for this, Rob. Not everyone has a Zap client, but by the end of today, you will all have a Zap client. So these are also Zap, iPerf, eperf, uh, Kismet, and if you want to use them like a pineapple, there's a bunch of hacking tools on here too as well. So to get started, uh, my apologies. First time I've ever done a live demo with things that are no head. This is a headless device. So we had to come up with a way that multiple people at the same time could do the same thing and not see anything. It's like trying to teach someone how to drive a car blind. We'll see how it turns out. First of all, uh, anybody watch the, the movie Mythbusters, the TV show? Uh, Adam Savage has a term he likes to use called knolling, so I put it on here. We want to knoll these devices, meaning take your inventory and you should have in your USB case a battery. It's in a box. Take the battery out. By the way, these batteries should be charged. You should get enough to finish what we're doing today. It's a pretty decent battery. We picked this one because when you push the button, it gives you an actual number of how much power you've got left. Plus, if you hit it again, you get a flashlight. Cool. Uh, so you should have a battery. You should also have the cable that comes with it. We'll be using this cable in reverse. Normally, you would use this cable, you'd hook this up to a charger and charge your battery, but when you put it into the battery, we can now power our device. So, same cable, both ways that way. Uh, next thing up, there are three little pieces. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to show you, I'm going to zoom in on the pieces themselves, but I'm just going to show you up front. There is a Transcend SD card reader. Uh, by the way, this is a very specific SD card reader. We had to get one that actually worked consistently across Windows and Mac platforms. So that's why we're giving you one. Even if you have an SD reader in your machine, use this one instead. Then there's this little kind of bluish green device. Um, it's like a micro SD on one side. The other side is something called EMMC. It's a type of memory we're going to be using. And finally, you should have a little teeny device that has an 8 on it. It's red with a little 8. That's the actual memory chip we're going to be loading on. So, power cable, adapter, memory card itself, and then the card reader. The next thing is this, the actual Odroid. Looks like a little single board computer, has HDMI port, USB. Um, you can also run it with SD as well. We're using EMCC because it's faster. And for what we want to do, we want to make sure that this that has enough speed. There's this little U-bend thing. It's a, looks like this. It's a U-shape. It has USB on one side. We're going to use it to make sure that our uh, Wi-Fi NIC is writing on top. Uh, you could just as easily put the Wi-Fi NIC in pointing out. Uh, nothing wrong with that. 
It's just uh, when we put it in our little case, it's, it makes a smaller package with the U-bend. So more aesthetics than anything else. Um, the, your WLPC drive, the USB drive, has the image we'll be using on it. It also has a, an app for the Windows people. Uh, in a minute, we're going to split into Windows people and Mac people. So how many Mac people do we have? How many Windows people? Yeah, that's what I guessed, about half and half. So we've got instructions for both, and you're going to have to kind of go down two parallel paths as we get there. And then there's also a little black case. In the black case, there's some um, screws and a little uh, envelope. We're going to wait, and the very last thing when we're all done is you put your case together. We've put the, uh, a couple of screwdrivers on the tables. Um, we'll see how well those screwdrivers work with these little teeny screws. Um, they don't have a lot of torque, but it, it will work. So the, the last thing, you can leave that in its bag because it's the very last thing we're going to do. So you should have all inventoried. We all inventoried. You have all your parts. Yep, good. Uh, over on the table over here, Fernay has put together. Oh, by the way, I just want to say one more time. Jerry Ola, thank you. He's not here. If you, if you want to send him thanks, he's worked many, many hours tweaking the script that we're going to be showing you to get this tool to work properly. Between Fernay and, Ol and Jerry, they've done great. Anyway, over here we have a switch, and, well, actually multiple switches, and on the switches we have little short Ethernet cables. At one point in time, after your device is working, we're going to use that to simulate how you'd use this in the real world. So to give you an example, in the real world, I would go up, let me switch. Okay, in the real world, sorry, I'm going to walk. You would take your little device and you would say, huh, I would like to test that AP. So you'd go someplace over to the switch closet and you'd plug this in. Well, when you plug it in, in the software you're going to be doing iPerf testing, you need to know this guy's IP address. It has no head. It has no screen. It's just dead. I mean, you can't see anything. A little light will blink, but you don't know what this IP address is. So what we're going to design this one to do and when we're done, I'll show you and have Blake worked on another project to make it even easier. But what we're going to do is you don't know what that IP address is. So we're going to take this, plug it in Ethernet. On the Ethernet port, it will get an IP address, DHCP. But I don't know what it is. So we have the Wi-Fi NIC acting as a hotspot. And it will be saying, hi, here I am. And in your case, we're going to have you all put them up as your first name, last name. So in a couple minutes from now, when you bring up Wi-Fi Explorer, you will see 90 SSIDs all on the same channel. But at least they'll be your own name. We'll know those who don't have their own name because by default they're my name. And if I see my name, that means one of you didn't do that step. And if we see 20 of you still using Keith Parsons, then we'll really know that I, I, I failed because I didn't explain it right. So you plug this in. It gets the IP address. You, from a phone, Tablet, laptop, you just associate to the wireless AP, the, the hotspot. You go to its default web page. It's always the same, 192.168.42.1. You log in, admin, admin, and up, and it says, my IP address is. And now you know the IP address of the other side. So you obviously get off this guy. You don't need to know his Wi-Fi anymore. Log in the normal network, do your iPerf test, and you know what its wired port is. What Blake did was made a, a way you didn't need to have the Wi-Fi part. It's a little extra card you add to this that when you plug it on, you plug it in and it says, IP address is, boom, and it shows up right on the screen. Brilliant. And if you don't want a default you know, a DHCP, you hit a little button on that little device and it switches into static, a predefined static mode. Love it, Blake. Thank you very much. He did the scripting work on that. Um, We've got a couple here to show you if you want to see what it looks like. Problem is, there's no cases for those yet. And going to your customer with something looks like this little hacker bread boarded up motherboard. Hey, can I put this on your network? At least if it's in a case, it'll have a little better look. Oh, just, just plug it in. There you go. Okay, so we have all our parts. If you have Windows, you need that Win Disk Imager. So take off the USB drive. There's a folder for Odroid. 
If you're a Windows user, take both of them and put them on your desktop. If you're a Mac user, just take the image only. It's the only one we're going to use. Okay, Mac guys first. By going through the Mac one, the Windows, you guys have an easier life because there's a tool that's going to do this. But the concept's the same for either of you. We have an image file. The image file has been built. Right now, if you put the little EMCC on your Odroid and you booted it up, it will boot into Linux with a full GUI interface. You could attach a USB keyboard to it. You could hook it up to an HDMI, and you have a full working Linux computer. We don't want you to do that. What we're going to do is replace that image with this custom image we've built that has iperf, eperf, zap, and all these other tools on it. The process that we're going to go through here is how do you configure your copy of that image to be different than everyone else next to you? Because if you all put the exact same image on, we would have a real hard time finding each of yours individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the image onto your desktop. Windows guys, take a break. Don't, don't do anything. Mac guys, I'm going to walk through it. Don't do anything. This is not PhD. Push here, dummy. Don't me click, you click, me click, you click. I'm going to do it, just walk you through, and then I'll let the Mac guys go. Then I'll walk you through Windows, we'll let the Windows guys go, and then I'll finally do one on my screen, and you can watch it as it goes by. Yes, Neil? The one you got from the, not the seven lab little silver one in a white box, but the one from, uh, that has everything on WLPC on it. Okay, we're going to take that image, put it on the desktop. You're going to open it, and because when Macintosh understands when you open an image file, it knows it's a drive, so you'll actually get a little drive icon that says boot. There is a step in here that you're supposed to eject that image. If you don't, you will have two boots, and you don't know which one's correct. So right now, don't do it. I'm just telling you, we're going to boot the image. You should have a folder called boot. In the folder, there's a file called dietpytxt. That's the file we're going to edit. When we go to edit it, just a hint, your, your instructions are all on the, you already have these, we emailed them to you. Anything that's in blue is either a click or something you're going to see on your screen. Anything that's on green is a variable. Anything that's red, you're going to type as a command. So we're going to find the place where it says SSID. Right now, your should be SSID Keith is what it's going to say. You're going to change it to one of these WLPC EUs. We have four. Sit at your table, each table, figure out who's going to be one, who's going to be two, who's going to be three, who's going to be four. Just because we're trying to load balance you across four different frequencies to better take the load. So but when you get to this part, between you at your table, just change this one, two, three, four. The password is password. What we're doing here is we're telling the image file, when it boots inside the Odroid, it will start loading its software. It will load its Wi-Fi NIC as a client. It will join SSID, WLPC EU01. PSK, password. And then it's going to use our internet connection to go pull some more Debian packages down to finish the install. We have, thanks to Fernay, a nice uh, caching server. So hopefully we won't have to hit all of you going all the way out to the internet. We've made it local, and we've already pulled the stuff down, so it should be close. Second thing you're going to do is after it reboots, that Wi-Fi NIC that was originally a client is going to reboot and become a hotspot. When it's a hotspot, we'd like you to put in first name, last name. Now you can change the word password because if everyone uses password, someone might get into your Odroid. But put in first name, last name because I'd like to see on the screen, you know, 90 names all in SSIDs at the same time. Plus, when we go to the next step after this, you will log into yours and not into anyone else's. So that's the two things we're going to change. We're changing which AP SSID we're going to have the client join initially, 
and then we're going to change what it's going to become when it becomes a hotspot. So those two steps. When you're done, save the changes to diet pie. Open it again, just to make sure your changes stuck. If not, they're all going to be the same. And then I want you to remember right here, eject the boot image. The image is still on your drive, but the opened image became a boot disk. We want that one to go away because guess what the actual EMC comes in as? Boot. And the next step, we're going to load this card. We take the little EMMC card, we attach it to the device, the little converter, plug it into the transcend, and it should look like this. There's your card plugged in. You can put the USB into your laptop port. You will find, when it boots, a label boot. Now this one, if it's, you had another one, you wouldn't know which one's which. That's why we ejected it first. Now this is the image, and we're going to go through some steps from on the Mac side to overwrite that image. First thing we're going to do is make sure this little disk util list command, it's in red, which means you're typing it in a terminal window. It's going to find which slash dev slash disk x. There is going to be an answer here. Disk util, unmount disk, you want to make sure you're going to unmount the correct one. It's the one that says Linux. Most of the time, it's going to be disk 2. Yes, Donald. Yeah, that's what, yeah, right here. Very important. Triple check that it's the correct device. Because you could just, like, make a very expensive anchor with your Mac. That's why we look first. This command is going to look, and then we're going to unmount it. The important part is if you unmounted your boot drive, you'd have other issues as well. So we're going to unmount it, and then we're going to put in this command right here. Now see that little file image is in green, which means it's a variable. The fat easiest way to do this, instead of typing in the file name, is you just go to where the image is on your drive, this little guy, and you drag it into that hole. So you type sudo space dd space if equals, drag the file name over, and it will bloop, automatically populate with all of the information. bs equals 1m space of equals dev r disk, and then see that little guy right there? He's a variable. If you had a 2 above, put in a 2 here. If you had a 3 above, put in a 3 here. And then what it's going to do is overwrite that image on your little EMCC to the one that has the unique diet pie text that you made. When you're all done, it takes a little while. Wait for the prompt to return. We were testing this yesterday, and Matthew's over there typing it in. He, he, it, it, when you type in sudo, it's going to ask for a password. And then he just, it, the, but you couldn't see, you won't see the password because it's hidden. So he just kept typing it over and over and over. It's pretty obvious. Uh, anyway. So, when you're done, you now have that boot disk is correct. You'll unmount the drive, eject it, make sure Mac will force you to do that. Remove the adapter, take the card off, and put it in the bottom. And then we're going to move to this last section together. Mac guys, go to sleep. Windows guys, what you're going to do, you're going to copy the same drive over. You're going to load this WinDisk imager. You're going to run the WinDisk imager. It's going to select the image you want to do. And unlike Mac, this is a GUI, so it's a little simpler to go through. You're going to pick the image that we have, open it, and there's little graphics to show what you're going to open, what you're going to click. Put in the adapter and the memory card. You'll find it. And then you're just going to overwrite and confirm it. And do 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 makes the same little changes. And then after it's burned, this is what's different from a Windows and a Mac. After it's on the EMCC, then you're going to enter those same details and make the change. Remember, your table is going to be one, two, three, four. So you split in the air, type in password, put in your username and uh, first name, last name, and whatever your password is. Save the diet text, and when you're done, you're going to say unmount, remove the adapter, and put the card away. Okay, that's. I'll give you time to play with that. I'm just going to finish up this thing and then to show you the process. Now you're going to have this little guy in the bottom 
of here. Now, there's only one way it goes. There's a little box in white. Line it up so the box in white, and when you push it on. Uh, these little EMCCs, a little fragile. Don't mess with them too much. And you'll just, it'll just snap on. Once it's on, this computer will now boot off that little image. And the little section we're going to follow up down here is when you're done making all the images, we're going to build it, put it all together. We're going to put the U-turn on the top center. The reason it's top center is because it, the U fits that way. Plug in the cable to your battery, put it in the, the C2, and you'll have to hit the battery button to turn the power on, and you'll see this go, and this next tape step takes 10 to 15 minutes, and you will see nothing. In order to keep you from not being bored, I'm going to do one up here, and so mine on the screen will be, you'll see what it's actually doing. You won't see yours, but you'll see it go, and you go, oh, okay. It, we, this process it's going out and pulling down Debian packages, installing them, loading the software, loading the iperf, loading the eperf, loading the zap, loading the kismet, loading the fruity Wi-Fi, and it's pulling all these packages and making it happen. When it's done, it will. Br when it's finished here, you will power cycle your Odroid. If you power cycle it too soon, you have to do the whole thing over again. That's. It actually takes seven minutes and thirty-five seconds when we used one through the caching server. I have no idea how long it's going to take with all of you. That's why we stretched it out to 10 to 15 minutes, and we're going to put one on the screen to see if it's running about the same speed. When the one on the screen's done, and I'll be the last to start, then we're pretty much sure you guys will all be done. And then when you reboot it, you should see in the air your SSID. You will then connect to your SSID, Go to 192.168.42.1, log in with admin admin, and it will say, there is your IP address. And you'll be in the 192.168.42. something as your IP address. When we're finished with that, we're going to take you over and have you, oh, actually, what I'll have you do is you can, at that point, SSH into your machine. And then you can see what you have access to the actual thing. When we're all done with that, we're going to have you go over here and say, now we're going to have you go over to the tables with the switches. Unplug your battery, plug it in the Ethernet cables, and I'm hoping you all don't do this simultaneously because there's not enough room over there. Plug your Odroid into one of the switch ports, go back to your desk, reconnect your SSID, because when you unplugged your Odroid, you were attached to Keith Parsons, now you reattach back to conference. When you go back to your desk, you're going to have to reattach to Keith Parsons. You will then do the same exact thing and see your IP address that you're pulling right there. And then at that point, we have a bunch of commands you're going to play with. So, Donald, um, Donald do you oh, have a question? Sorry, that, that's loud. Oh, oh. Um, that document you're seeing on the screens should have been emailed last night. Who didn't get it? Looks like several of you did. Whoa. <laughs> Matthew. Mateo, did you email it to everyone last night? <laughs> hey, get on it. He told me he did it last night. That's why I figured you're all here. You're fired. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Trump. Okay, so that's the process we're going to do. We'll go get that email to you so you stay in your machines. Um, you can... I'll just turn this back in there. That's the process. When we're done, you should have a little device that has an IP address on the wired side. It's broadcasting SSID on the wireless side with your name, and you can go in and make any changes. Uh, there's some steps at the very bottom, some, command, some SSH commands you can play with. Uh, there's some other things on that list that you can play with it at that point. Uh, but then when you're done, assemble it. And then you have a little toy to go back and play with. Matthew, is it coming? And I will not be trumping anybody tonight, so. So at least you can copy the stuff off your USB, then 
take your USB port out and you should be ready to go. Uh, battery should be charged uh, good enough for everything we're going to do today. So um, I can start helping some of the uh, Windows uh, users. That's the simplest one. No, 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 no. Okay, um, hang on one second. Uh, there is some confusion on the first SSID that we're going to put. We have to divide divide people into tables. You guys at the table? One, two, three, four, one. You guys? Two, three, four, one. Two, th Just work it out. You're adults. Each table, split yourselves up. <laughs> I'm waiting for my email. From this is not what you're going to be using your Have you done this? machine for. This is only where you're going to type in that one little line to say you want your Odroid to use that one. Your computer can still stay on conference. Does anyone know the Jeopardy song we can sing for Matthew? It will make him go faster. No, if you, uh, no, 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 no. So the, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, so enter your Wi-Fi details below. So this, you're going to be joining one of the yes. APs over there. Then once, once you, uh, then you come down here and you already yes, did I that. I changed this, I changed yes. this. And then save that file. Right, I already did that. You just, you just double checking now. Double okay, checking. perfect. Um, so now uh, what you do is eject that drive right. and put that little thing under the... Uh, is this yours? No, that's, that's it. Right. I mean, I have all right. Okay, yeah. So I know how to do it. Okay, you should get it on your email. Do you got it? Oh, no, because um, that's for the connection. You don't, you don't actually don't have to do anything. No, no, no. We know, no, we know that. Exactly. But we have this four APs as these. If people randomly start with number four and number four is not online, uh, nobody's going to be able to pull well, the package. Well, they don't, they don't need to join that AP. Yes, they do to download the download yeah. packages. Not from this guy. No, no, from part, this. From, but part, if yeah. we can't see it, why is one on one? If we can't see it, okay. I'm gonna put it on. Hold on. You, you told so, me to pick between WLPC. And yeah, we're not we're not joining the uh, computer, but I will put no, it in only are, one. But these are so we need yeah. we need oh, four up and running to see. see. No, it's up and running. No. We don't see number four. Okay. No, 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 Okay, if you're on four, go to three. If you can't see it. Okay, why do you guys have your machines put together? Oh, but you can't. You have to finish your card outside. Okay, did you get the email? Did you get the attachment? Dun, 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 dun.
AP4 should be up in a channel you can see. Uh, you're going to see, if you did the instructions right, you're going to see your name broadcasting in channel 36. Okay, one, this way. How long has it been going? So what you can do, yeah. what you can do is bring this device over to this station. Bring it. Go ahead and bring it. Okay. As you start working, I'm going to do one up on the screen, just so you can see when you get to that 10, 15 minute wait, you can see on my screen what's going on. Uh, but you, you need to wait until you can see your SSID in the air. So I'm just going to do one up here. So now, now we reboot. All right, we got several working. Now, if you looked at the uh, DietPy file when you were entering the data, by default, everybody is on A and channel 36, which means everybody's going to have an AP on channel 36. That's, that was like that by default, so you can change it to any other channel. Anybody else ready? Come to the station. Winter is coming. You're ready. Sigurd, Norka, Nicholas, Christian, Harry, Evil Chipmunk, Andre, Tobias. If you haven't run, you're ready to go. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Kill it. Now that it's working, destroy it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> So wait, you already associated to it? No, not yet. Okay, so, but you saw your name. Yeah, I saw the So SSID. before you kill it, with yeah. your phone or your computer, join that SSID okay. with, you know, join the, your name SSID yeah. with yeah. the password you put on it, and you should be able to go to 192.68.42.1 yeah. and log in with admin admin. Yeah. And then you'll see the screen in there before, before you kill it. And then come back. Okay. Did you associate to your SSID? And you saw the screen. All right. So now, kill it. Yeah. Okay, mine just finished. So if you'd started before no, I started, you should be done. Come here. Get closer. Okay, now you turn it on. Yeah. 
So <laughs> no, look up ahead. on the screen for a second while yours are still working. Okay, I'm coming. When it finished, it said so my IP address down. is 192.168.42.1. That's the address the of the wireless NIC. NIC. So in order for me to get into this, let me show you what it looks like. Give me a second to swap screens. Carter. So, wait, you already associated to your SSID? Yeah. So kill it. Unplug it. Are you sure? <laughs> okay, so now plug it into one of these cables. Okay, so here's Samuel Clements. That's the name I happen to choose for mine, so it wouldn't interact with the one I had as the default. I'm going to change... SSIDs and to, wait for it to boot Samuel Clements. And I should associate to that AP. Now, if I open a browser, 182, 168.42.1. <laughs> I should be on this guy, and he's not going to have a uh, hey, come on. Join that SSID certificate. So there we go, and the password is admin admin. And now I can see I'm up WN zero. My Wi-Fi NIC is working. There he is, but there's no Ethernet port. That's because he's not attached to an Ethernet port. At this point in time, I know that uh, I'm ready to go over and get a wired address. But what I could do at this point in time... Actually, I, so I got something better for you. Oh, wait. I was just going to try something. No, no, no. Wait. Okay, yeah. Because I can now uh, SSH in and see the diet pie. I've already been on this guy, that's why. Oh, you're going to give me Ethernet? Yeah. So this time I'm rebooting with an Ethernet port connected. At the bottom, you can see the link is up one gig. Oh, by the way, if you do happen to buy one of the LCD screens, this image also supports the LCD screen. If you add it, it will automatically pick it up. And now I got an IP address, 192.168.234 off the wired port. Now I know that. I could go in, log in from the wired side, and have access. You know, yeah, with your phone, yeah. like her. Yeah. Carter, yours is ready to go. Oh, a little tent talk about other things. Francois. Well. Jerry, yours is ready to go. Broke it already? Yes. <laughs> did, did you break it already? Yes. No, so, so you don't have the memory. Where's the memory? You lost it. It's down there somewhere. Oh, it's here. Okay. So we're just trying a different one? Yeah. So you don't have memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening with it. Make sure it snaps. There we go, that one's going. And there it comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this that? Yeah, yeah, let me try it again. Okay. Try it again. Oh, it's burning now? Do you want to bring it over and see what it's doing now? Here, just plug it into the screen. Yeah. Can we just wait until it's done? Yeah, but yeah. we can take it over there and look, see what, what it's doing on the screen. Do you always have to edit the text file? Yes. There's no possibility. So here's another question. If by some reason you put a password you forgot or you made changes, you have to reburn the image to 
change th those initial settings. You cannot just change it on the fly. And wait 10 minutes again. After you reboot, it just... You All right, folks. Right. We have to finish up here a little while. Uh, for those of you who it worked, yay! For those of you who didn't work, um, if, it didn't, if it didn't stick the first time, uh, you can always just power cycle and do it again. If after a couple of power cycles you see nothing and you're really frustrated, we have an HDMI over here you can plug in to see what's going on. Worst case, you go home and do it again. You don't, there isn't anything in this room that you need to change. All you would have to change on your nobody, end nobody would instead of WLPC01, like put your own Wi-Fi and just reprocess it again. I've, on the bottom of this Odroid, I think I've done it six, seven times with the same EMCC, changing things around. Uh, so if, if it's not working for you, uh, we'll, we'll give you some help. If not, we'll be doing the uh, 6.15, you said, for dinner, and 6.30 in here for training. And this session's done. Uh, Hands-on stuff, fun, good or bad? A little bit frustrating? All right, so we're done. Uh, if you just want to stay and play until dinner and then the thing at 6.30, that's fine too. But this session is over. <laughs>